Hey, it's Dawson again. This is my second video on YouTube. Uh, today I'm going to talk about uh, my Deathwish Records collection. Um, again, if you watched my last video, you know I don't have that many records. But uh, Deathwish Records is my favorite uh, record label. And I do have quite a bit from them, um, for my standards of quite a bit. Uh, <clears throat> so I'm going to start off with the 7 inches and then I'll go to the LPs. Alright. So the first uh, Death Wish Records record I bought was um, the Touche More and Pianos Become the Teeth Split. If you watched my last video, you know I I really like emo and screamo and stuff. So um, when I first started getting the genre, I listened to a lot of pianos and uh, Touche More. So it's on this really cool baby blue um, color vinyl. I. Uh, I really like the Touche Amore side. Um, this was the EP that got me into Touche Amore. Um, but I do think I like the piano side a little bit better. Um, I know a lot of people talked about at, when it first came out that I felt like Touche Amore was kind of dragging it on. And um, I don't necessarily agree with that, but um, I do think pianos, they're a little bit, um, they're more accustomed to having longer songs and Touche Amore isn't. Well, at the time, they weren't. Um, all right. So one of my favorite bands is Self Defense Family, and uh, the first record I bought from them was this EP, the uh, Scotland EP, and these two songs. Uh, indoor Wind Chimes and Katajin are, <laughs> um, I think Katajin is my favorite song by the band. It's very emotional and Pat Kinlan has just a way with lyrics that's just unlike anybody in the genre. It's on Transparent Red. If you haven't listened to Self Defense Family, um, using their own words, they, they say they copy Lungfish, so they are very similar to Lungfish. Uh, but they're definitely more, there's more to them than just a uh, Lungfish cop, uh, copy band. Um, they seem to just do whatever they want, and I really like their attitude of that. Um, you can tell that they all have like hardcore punk backgrounds just from their attitude, but they don't necessarily, they don't really play hardcore. Um, but they just keep putting out good material, and they really so much music and it's really hard for uh to track down all of it for me but um it is it is a cool challenge and it's not like when something comes out i'm not like upset about it or anything i'm like oh new self-defense first thing i do is go listen to it you know so um there's a few people on youtube that have like almost everything or everything i think l mounts I, I believe he has every release by them um I might be mistaken, but or really close to every release by them. Awesome band. Which leads me into my next record from Death Wish, which is the Creative Adult Self Defense Family Split. Uh, this is what introduced me into to Creative Adult. Um, it's on really cool transparent green. This record I purchased because I was really into uh, split seven inches for a while, so I bought a whole bunch of splits. Even if I didn't listen to them or anything like that, and uh, I knew who Self Defense Family was, so I, I bought it. Uh, the Self Defense Family side is like a slow burner for me. At first, I was like, I don't know it, I didn't really like it, but then I, I now I like it a lot. But the Creative Adult side, I think, is the best side uh, with their track Americans, and it's this this really slow, sludgy, post punk, hardcore track that just talks about. Americans eating fast food and using credit cards and stuff like that and it's um, it's really fun but very I don't nihilistic I, it's it's an awesome track though and um, after I after I bought that split I quickly ran out and bought um, their creative adults album psychic Me psychic mess and then they put out an album last year that was really cool too all right the last most recent Death Wish purchase for seven inches for me was on um, the band Some Girls the Blues. So this is a really old Death Wish release, and I found it at Reckless Records. 
it's out of print, I believe. Um, it's on white vinyl, and it's single-sided. And I believe there's six songs. One, two, three, five, so four songs. My no, you know, no, five songs. My bad. Um, they are a really awesome band. I didn't when I bought it. I didn't even. I've never even heard of them. All I know is that I saw the Death Wish tag and I said, okay, it's going to be good. So I just put a lot of trust in Death Wish. Also, the, the sleeve is actually interesting. It's not, not the sleeve, the cover is actually interesting. It's just a piece of paper. It's like not a fold out or anything like that. Um, so you know it's a little older than their new releases. Packaging definitely got better, but it's cool. And uh, I, listened, I, I listened to it a lot and it reminds me of a more aggressive... Um, single mothers, when single mothers put their self-titled out, not the single mothers, um, not their most, not like their most recent release, but their EP. That's what it reminds me of, um, as far as like lyrical themes and, uh, just the aggression and quality, like the sound quality of the music. I really like it, and I'm trying to track down their other EP. Um, I think I, I found it on Discogs. But um, I'd prefer to find it in a store. Just, I don't know, it's fun for me. So that's it for 7 inches. I'm going to get into the LPs. So this is Trap Them's Seizures in Barren Places. If you don't know who Trap Them is, they're a really, really cool like, hardcore grindcore band. Um, the artwork is really awesome. I think this is just on black vinyl. Yeah, it's just on black vinyl. Um, it's a record that when I first put on, I, it was a record I, I got before I even listened to them. When I first put it on, I didn't really, I didn't really enjoy it. Um, because there was a time where I wasn't listening to really metal influenced hardcore. I wasn't really into metal a lot for a while. Um, as far as hardcore punk goes, it was mostly the emo stuff. And uh, now I started. I've gotten really into metal recently, and I've I revisited this, and I'm really enjoying it. Here's the lyrics. Um, the lyrical themes and of this album are just so interesting to me. It talks. It seems like like a, an apocalyptic world kind of. Um, Really interesting stuff. I, I'm kind of upset at myself that I kind of slept on it. But great band, and now like I've gone through and I've listened to their other material, and so yeah, I would definitely check them out. <clears throat> Stark weather. So, again, a more metal-influenced band. I mean, they are a metal band, uh, metal hardcore. Again, I kind of slept on this one as well, revisiting it. It is an awesome album. And I put it on probably once a week, and I've shown my friends, and they're all really into it. It's on white vinyl. There you go. Really cool stuff. Uh, Touche More is Survived By. I found this at Reckless as well. Um, I listened, like, I bought this a while after it came out, actually. Um, I just... I don't know why, I listened to it a lot, I listened to it on Spotify a lot, and I never ordered the record, and then I found it at Reckless, and it's, this was used, and it was just a couple bucks because it was used, and so I picked it up, and it's perfect condition, really cool blue marble. It, 
it's an album that I think is their best. It's going to be hard for them to top it. Um, I know Stage 4 came out this year, and uh, lyrically, Stage 4 is really on point. I can't really complain anywhere lyrically, and I really like the uh, appearance from Julian Baker, but for some reason, I just... I always go back to Is Survive By instead of Stage 4. If I'm listening to Stage 4 halfway through, I'll just think I'm just going to go listen to Is, uh, is Survive By because I just think it's a better album. Um, not that Stage 4 isn't a bad album by any means, and I have a lot of friends who think that Stage 4 is better. And But to me personally, I connect a lot more with Is Survive By. Next album is Death Heaven Sunbather. So, this is the first like black metal album I uh, I've ever listened to. It's um, a double LP. It's not a gatefold. Um, one's transparent yellow, and then one is transparent pink. Recently, I've gotten a lot into black metal. Um, here's the pink side. I uh, I didn't really listen, like a lot of black metal when I tried to first get into it a couple years ago, but now I've given it a second chance, and um, really the Deathwish band Young and In The Way really helped me move over to it. I know they're not... A straightforward black metal band, but um, after listening to Young and in the Way, it was a lot easier to get into Mayhem and Bathory and Dark Throne and and uh, bands like that, uh, Wolves in the Throne Room and stuff like that. I'm still new to the genre, so if you have any requests, just tell me in the comments and I'll check them out. Um, so I mean, yeah, I'm not gonna try to act like I'm a black metal genius or anything. I'm really new to the genre, so. But yeah, I really liked Death Heaven and uh, Sunbather is a really good album. Um, and uh, I, um, like, in a similar vein, Oathbreaker put out an album last year. And I really enjoyed that as well. And it was kind of like a shoegazy black metal. Um, and I really like that style. Um, but um, I'm also trying to get back and go back and listen to all the old black metal bands to see where it all started and stuff like that and it's it's a fun experience. Next album, Planes Mistaken for Stars Prey. Planes Mistaken for Stars is a band from Peoria and then they moved to Colorado. Um, they are like a hardcore rock and roll band, honestly. I, that's like the best way I can put it. Some of their riffs you, come straight from like just a hard rock song. But their production is very punk, and the way he sings is just not normal for like rock music, and it's definitely a punk vocal style. This album is really something special. Planes is it's hard to there's no band that's like them. Um, it's a cool color. They. They're, they sound violent, they sound disgusting, but they're also melodic, and they're sad, and they're angry. Um, their lyrics, they're very poetic when it comes to their lyrics. Their artwork is always great, too. But um, just the lyrics is... Like, the lyrics right here, the house feels like a hospice, your hands they always shake. To feel alone in, is all you've known, and it's more than I can take. It's it's poetic, it's, it's a masterpiece. And I, I know I use that word a lot, if you notice from my last word, but um, I don't want it. I can't stress this enough that Planes, they've never put out a bad song, you need to be listening to them. I'm going to show another Planes album. Planes Mistaken for Stars, Mercy. This is a, a reissue that Deathwish did. It originally was not a Deathwish release. Another gatefold. This is probably their best album in my opinion. Uh, 
if you haven't um, heard this album, you need to put it on and listen to it straight through. It's a really interesting ride. It's an uncomfortable ride. But it's it's just so good. It's on this really cool purple and, and uh, gray swirl. And a cool printed sleeve. This album, I know, is important to a lot of people um, in the scene. And um, the band members themselves speak very fondly of this album. All right. Next is uh, Self-Defense Family, Heaven is Earth. This was the first album I pre-ordered. And <laughs> I was very happy with it. Um, it's not as... I guess aggressive as Try Me, but I think it's just as good. Um, some of my favorite songs on here are uh, Everybody Wants a Prize for, uh, for Feeling and Basic Skills is, Basic Skills is something, it's definitely the standalone track where if I could say like, what's a good song to listen to if you've never heard Self-Defense Family, I would listen to Basic Skills. It is on this white and gray swirl. I believe uh, Jacob Bannon helped with the artwork on this from Converge. Maybe with just the design of it. I'm not positive, but I believe so. But yeah, it's really cool. Cool album. The last album I'm going to speak about is Whips and Chains, Whips and Chains, Master Slife. This album reminds me a lot of, of Code Orange, but a little bit more raw, more primitive sounding. Um, just on black vinyl. Um, this album. It's just kind of a kick to the face when you put it on. It doesn't let up the whole entire time. The lyrics are very conf confrontational, very in your face. It's something, it's an experience that's not really quite like anything else. Um, I'm a big fan of them. You can see back here, I have a poster. I also have a Modern Life is a War poster from Deathwish as well. But yeah, it's a really cool um, release. So that was that's it so far in my Deathwish Records collection. I will keep updating you guys on that. And uh, thank you so much for watching.